Okay, so last week with the head. We did the inside. Today we're on the outside. So I'm going to stand out here and go over to the window. Outside, looking in. Okay. So on this one here, we're going to look for glands, salivary glands, and some of the muscles of mastication. And you'll, and you'll see similar things on it in the cat. Right, but you got to wait till you get to your kitty cat. So we have temporalis muscle, the masseter, and underneath the digastric, right here. So we got digastric, masseter, temporalis. Then there's two glands we'll see. We'll see parotid, which becomes what when it gets infected? What's it known as? Lymphadenopathy. Oh, mumps. Mumps, 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 mumps. <laughs> this little copper color thing running across, that would be the parotid duct, which you'll see in the cat. And underneath, we have submandibula right here. Submandibula. Okay? It's under the mandible head, submandibula. Sublingual is tucked up way under the tongue. You don't see it here and you don't see it in the cap. So that takes care of this. So now we go to this thing that says digestive model. So the digestive model is this. At least we have to see it in the human. Don't fall down. So on this thing here, can you see it? We can see hard palate, soft palate, esophagus. Then we have the stomach. So this is your fungus of the stomach. This is the cardia portion. This is the pyloric portion, where you have sphincters and bones. Then this is the lesser curve, greater curve. So when you're looking for the omentums in the cat, the greater omentum comes off here, lesser omentum off here, coming up towards the liver. All right? And then we have ridges, and they're known as rugae. Not to be mixed up with reggae. Okay. Okay, well, we know drums banging and stuff. Like that. So we should put a, a reggae drum at the practice. What's this? Okay. But rugae. Okay, what that does is grind and churn the food down. They're muscular ridges that just crush the food. So you take this solid bolus that comes down and it turns into a liquid kind that enters the water. So it's all mush that goes into the water, not whole food. So the more on, you know, the unchewed food is, the longer it sits in here to get out of here, okay? So that's the parts of the stomach. Then we go liver, gallbladder. The duct coming off the gallbladder is the bile duct, cystic, David's wrong. And the one coming off the liver is a paddy. Where they meet becomes the bile, which is that little one there or the green one deep in here is the bile duct. Running it, this would be over here, not where it's sitting. Running into the the water. This is your pancreas, and this is your spleen. So let's do large intestine first. So this is the large intestine. So you have ascending, transverse, descending colon, and then the rectum. So let's take this out of the way. Now here is your duodenum, first part of the small intestine. We get here where number thirteen is. This would be jejunum. And then we get over here, this is the ileum, where it's going to meet the colon at the cecum, which means pouch. And there's a valve in there called ileocecal valve, which is a one-way valve to prevent the backflow of your feces back into the small intestine. If you don't want E. coli bacteria in the small intestine, you're going to get that deadly ill. We need it in here for synthesizing vitamin K and other fat soluble vitamins, but we do not need it in the smaller gut, like the small intestine or stomach. So if you ingest E. coli, you get that ill from it. But it lives, and how do you pick up E. coli infections? Well, you go to a restaurant, and the person went to the bathroom, wiped himself, didn't wash his hands, and makes you sound. Oh. You have E. coli. Oh. Isn't that a nice thing? And there's your appendix right here. And right here, the purple one on this would be the portal, hepatic portal vein. There's the big well one would be inferior vena cava. So there's your hepatic portal vein. In the cat, it'll be yellow. In two cats, it's blue. But in the other four, it's yellow. They die in a yellow color. So it'll be the same setup in the cat. You don't have to break down the large intestine in the cat. You just got to go cool, large intestine, sequel. Don't look for an appendix because the cat does not have an appendix. Okay? 
And that's it for the models. The models are pretty straightforward and easy. Because it looks like what it is. The cats aren't too bad either. They're pretty easy to see. Because what you're going to look for is a Y. Okay, so let's put this down so we don't only look on the floor. But when we get to the building area, we're going to look for a Y. So let's make it green. So the gold bar will, will be a green color because when you embalm, the solution turns green. So you have to be careful embalming some of that dye with something with hepatitis, but they're all nice and yellow and jaundice. Because even though you clear them out, the next morning it will be green like that. So people don't, you know, like grandma looking like a washer. So they're not happy with that. So you're going to be careful. You're going to use anything aldehyde free when you're clearing out the body. So we have this one coming down. So this would be your gallbladder. What's the proper name for a gallbladder? It begins with a CH, doesn't it? So. And this is the, the cystic duct. And then coming off the liver, maybe we don't have brown, we'll make it black. And if your liver would be above all this, this would be between the lobes of the liver, you would see this. Coming off the liver would be the common. Yeah. And where they unite is the bile dump. And it's shaped just like a Y. And it'll look like that in the cat. So you have cystic, common hepatic, bile, and where they meet in here is in the small intestine, which is the dorado. And coming right around here, coming up is the head of the pancreas. So this is why when you've got a tumor in the head of the pancreas, you're kind of dumb because you're closing all this off. All they can do is place shunts in there to keep you as comfortable as they can until you finally go. Because what happens, eventually the tumor rolls through the pancreas where the digestive enzymes secrete out into the gut and start digesting your organs and stuff. That's what makes it so painful, pancre pancreatic cancer. Because it's going back up and it's going to come up somewhere. So it starts digesting itself. Because you're going to enzyme. All the digestive enzymes come from the pancreas, including buffer solution. So it's coming in here is a very acidic solution. In your stomach and the small intestine can't handle that. So you got buffers that form an answer to neutralize it. And then it gets the right pH for the, for the digestive enzymes to work on. And so that's the biliary, biliary tree. So it's pretty straightforward. It looks like the Y. You know, in the leg of it is the bile duct coming off on the right of the cystic coming off the arm. Because you remember, if you've got five lobes, you've got five ducts meeting this. It's, so the bile is made in the liver stored in the gallbladder. So you need an abundance of it, the gallbladder will contract it and push it out. So cholecyst is its proper name. So you hear, you know, a lot of Spanish people, they come in with pain, they got, I got folic, they call it cool. They get stomach pain. And cholecyst, colic is the gallbladder. Cyst means bladder. Colic is the gall. So gallbladder. If they have inflammation, cholecystitis. If they have a stone, cholelithiasis it's called. It's like they have a stone in the kidney, renal lithiasis. It's deep into the kidney, nephrolithiasis. It was made in nephrons. So it depends where it is. Terminal diocese means stone. They just clamp this one off. They clamp it here. Now, this brings up a good point why, one of our, when I was in practice, one of our secretaries, by mistake, they clamped here. So they have to get discharged from the hospital. She gets rushed back in with gallbladder symptoms. And then denying it, well, it can't be, they took it out. Well, yeah, I'm sick as a dog, throwing up, so they went in surgery, they clamped the wrong, they clamped off the bio duct, not the cystic duct. So it was backing up into the liver. And then eventually, bile will spill over into the, into the, uh, into the, into the, into your urine, and you get the nice tea colored urine. That's how bad it'll get. The first will be as yellow as can be, jaundice, or ictus, and, you know, and you'll have it all falling back. Into the, so it's a nasty condition when people die of pancreatic cancer, hepatitis, or any of these diseases. And usually the, the body is red hot from a high fever 
I got 104, 105 in bright yellow. Literally bright yellow. Mm -hmm. Can't miss it. So it's nasty. And it's all swollen in this area here because everything is backed up to get the sightings as we're filling the fluid. So it's a nasty condition. So a lot goes on there. And what is it? What is the 4Fs of the, of the uh, of gallbladder disease? Fat, fair, 40 is the most. Fat, fair, 40 female. Much more common in female 4 to 1 than male. Is gallbladder disease like just a diseased gallbladder? Like gallbladder? Yeah, some gallstones, some high gallstones, some are just lazy gallbladder where the gallbladder secretes slowly, these people suffer. And some are just, um, the gallbladder gets diseased, it's not becoming the chronic. Not uncommon with people who booze it up a lot. Mom, they just take it out. Well, they will. Uh, but that's what they're doing, they're to take it out. You know, today it's just three little pinholes that they go into and take it out, not like years ago. They're a little uncomfortable for the first day, and then a couple of days you're back to normal. As long as they do it right. That's the thing. Under, right? So, like, if someone had emergency surgery to take out their gallbladder? Why would you? Here's when they were doing emergency surgery to take out the gallbladder. If the stone is here, it was not here. Yeah, the stone was there. So it was blocking the bile duct. It was blocking everything, the liver and everything. So they have to go in and take it out instantly. They can't fool around. See, they messed up with me and they didn't take that out first. So they took my gallbladder out, then maybe lie down on, on my stomach and get an endoscopy. Endoscopy? Yeah. And then friggin' yeah, last school. I woke up in the middle of mine oh. when they were dilating this office, so they had the biggest tube you could put down there, and I wake up like gagging. And they come to the school, who's with me? No shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to grab it, and they grabbed my hand. And they knocked me back out and they took it out and stuff. So I go, when I recovered, I said, did I wake up or not? It's like a bad dream. <laughs> yeah. I said, what the heck? I said, I told you, I don't give a shit if I die during the procedure. I don't want to wake up. Because <laughs> I'm watching the bowls of solution. And I go, that's, that's not going to work. That's nowhere near what they gave me last time. Oh, oh yeah. And it was weird because I started using it as soon as they hit me with, with the, uh, with, with the um, happy sauce. Yeah, happy sauce. The nip of amnesia. I'll, I'll, you know, out I go instantly. Somebody injected me. They inject in, and I'm not falling asleep. Now you have the thing in your mouth, so you can't talk. It's almost like an X-rated movie with the ball. You can't talk, and you're like, and I'm like, and, and now I'm starting to get tightness in my chest. And I get react if I'm, I'm under, you know, and then wake up. I said. You know, I see him tomorrow afternoon, the doctor for that, and I'm going to go for another one every two years. And then I said, you know, if I have a funny taste in my mouth, I'm going to use the wrong name first. <laughs> 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 All right, any questions right on this? This is oh, pretty straightforward. I know we haven't hit it yet in lecture, but we will. Once we start getting into this stuff in lecture, the speed of lecture is really going to pick up pace over the next few weeks to get through the systems, um, unfortunately. And if I can combine heart and vascular together next week, that pushes ahead. But the final the week after would be urinary repo. And the last week of April, we could maybe do the practice. But you guys have tests next week, too, so I'm going to do it without doing that much stuff in the week. Or I'll put vascular and urinary repo all together. But it's not, the vascular is not tough. I'll just do the cardiac next week, the heart. That will be the last week of April. I would like to do it the last week of April if we can finish well, it. Well, I'm just going to try to get the, that Wednesday. Well, so I can't, I'm not guaranteeing yet. Give me, give okay. me a week or two, okay. I'll, I'll let you know at the end of next week. But that's it for uh, for me today until we get to your cats. So on your cats, same thing. Now, there's two ligaments you got to look for on your cats. Well, the falciform ligament and ligamentum teres. And what that's going to be is under your liver. So when the liver's up, pulled away from the stomach, I mean, the, the gallbladder, right? The gallbladder pulled up away from the liver. You're going to have this line coming down like this. The stick line in the front <coughs> of the ligamentum teres, which means round ligament, which once was your umbilical vein. It's going to run right in. 
coming off the back of it, almost like a flag shape like this, is the falciform. And that's where you would see that. Okay, so those are the ligaments that are anchoring everything in place here. Then you would have inside, we talk about mesenteries, so the greater and lesser omentum are mesenteries. And so is the, the, meso, the mesocolon and the mesentery proper. What mesenteries are, they're made of connect, they're connective tissue, epithelial tissue combined that supports and walls off the intestine so infection doesn't spread all around. But the bigger thing of it, they're loaded with lymphatic channels in blood supply, and it's a quick way of getting blood supply into the intestines, enough, so that the hepatic system will drain everything back to the liver to be detoxified, and then from there it goes into your body after it gets detoxed to the liver. So the the uh, the mesentery proper, be like you hold your small intestine up like a wagon wheel, and you see this looks like stained glass. That's that. The mesocolon is the connective tissue that holds the colon to the body wall. And then the greater momentum is like a big fatty blanket coming off the greater curve, covering everything. You pull it up, and you can see the pancreas underneath it. Then if you, for the lesser momentum, it's at the lesser curve, it's like a little piece of tissue running towards on the liver. And that's what you can find in your cat. Okay, so that's pretty much it. You know, and the same thing when you look in here, not all the cats have the dorsal and ventral um, facial nerves, so most likely they'll not be pinned on the practical because we're over the next two weeks, I know the ones that are left will totally be broken and you won't see them. But the dorsal's here, the ventral's here, and right here, coming straight between them is the parotid duct. So the parotid gland sits here in the cat, the mandibular sits right here, then you have the digastric, you move the digastric, you see the hypoglossal nerve. That nerve is there in every cat, so it's easy to see. Okay, so don't get that hung up on, on the nerves of the face, because I don't think they're gonna be there to pin. Even though I go one foot away, I won't do this because it won't be fair to the other lab section. Okay? Other than that, it's lab time. It's an easy lab. It really, it really is. They have nerves on your cat. The cat's not nervy. Yeah, got no nerve. No, I don't need your pen. I'm just teasing you. Oh, well. I just want to see you start yelling. Okay, right in here is the temporal muscle. Mm -hmm. the muscle tissue right here. This is the masseter. And here's your digastric. See, it goes all the way around the digastric. Mm -hmm. And if we roll it out of our way, there's your hypoglossal. Okay, so here's your mandibular gland hanging on by a thread. So this is its duct. This duct would be down here coming up this way. This is the parotid, and here's the parotid duct right here. Coming off the parotid gland to the second molar of the face. So that takes care of the upper part here. If we pull it up, let me slide your pulse, I don't want to get it. So if we pull him up this way, and pull up his diaphragm, all right, so in the front part of the diaphragm, see it gets thicker and whiter, like a thick band right here. That's the ligamentum teres, which was the umbilical vein going down into the liver. On the side, like a little, it's like a flag-shaped tissue right here I'm poking the probe into. That's the falciform. So there's the falciform, and that's your ligamentum teres. Okay? If we get into the liver and separate the medial and lateral lobe from one another, here's your gallbladder, like a green collapsed balloon, okay? And as we come in here and raise all these structures up, like this, and pull it tight, now you can see a Y shape. So right here would be cystic, common hepatic, and then the bile. So gallbladder, cystic, coming off the liver is a common, <laughs> common hepatic, and then the bile duct pouring right down into the duodenum, and this is all your pancreas. See it? So the head of the pancreas is right here. So they all meet in together. Because they, they unite together, the ducts. They come the apatal pancreatic duct, you know, uh, the ampular and vata, so the ampular and the sphincter, which becomes sphincter. No, you travel to Ovi to get to Vata, Sphincter Ovi, which is the ampulla Vata.
that'll be as we go into it. Here's my greater momentum. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. And this is the spleen. This guy literally had to take him and put him in the sink and wash him. He had so much necrotic tissue stuck in him. This is the lesser momentum coming up towards the liver. See that? There's the lesser, there's the greater. This is all your stomach. So here's your greater curve, here's your lesser curve. And now you're going into the duodenum, the small intestine. So this is duodenum. See right here, the pancreas is ending and it's starting to change into a loop like a J. Mm -hmm. This is duodenum, this is jejunum. This is the mesentery proper. That. Looks like a wagon, looks like stained glass wagon. Oh. So the, the arterial comes straight in, then it branches off, so I don't need 20 feet of artery. You can do it with half the amount. That's why the body builds itself this way. And so these are all, this is mesentery right here, mesentery proper. And mesocolon is this. This is your colon. The mesocolon anchors it to the body wall. Wait, so is it like that whole thing or just the veins? No, the whole thing, the tissue. The tissue is the, is the mesentery, not, the, not the veins. Okay. Okay. So this is all your colon. So as we trace our colon back up, we come to the end of the small intestine, which is the ileum. I l e u m, not i u m. We spell that one wrong. It's wrong. Because oh, uh, i u m is the bone. E u m is the, is the intestine. Remember that. This is the cecum, which means pouch. And this is poopy. See? <laughs> and then right here is the ileocecal valve where the ileum connects to the cecum. You have a valve in there known as the ileocecal valve. I did, but there's a lot in there. This cat died full. If we look, rope them that's around, cool. that's poop. That's cool. The green stuff. The green stuff is crapola. You never eat lobster? <laughs> you don't like lobster? Why? That's a part. The cockroaches of the sea. I know, that's why I like them. I like cockroaches of the sea. Come on, here it is. Here's your hepatic portal vein in your cat. It's blue. It's right here. Train it back towards the liver. And what's it called? Hepatic portal vein. And I believe that's it. There's nothing else.